everybody. Today is your day. The beginning of this crazy time that we're having of online learning and at home learning. So I just wanted to start off this week with just helping you get things started. I'm not going to throw anything new at you. I know that many of you have multiple kids at home. You're working from home. Your spouse is working from home. It is crazy. So Nothing new is going to be thrown at you. I'm not going to try to make anything complicated ever, but especially this week. So I thought that I would just go through the packet and try to answer ahead any questions that you might have as you've gone through it or as you will go through it today. Um, that way I can just help you kind of get ahead of it. Blue paper. This breaks down everything that needs to be done each day and then what it looks like in the rest of the packet. I'm gonna show you what that looks like at home so you can have a frame of mind because sometimes words don't explain it the right way. So the first thing that's up is the Hegarty Phonics, uh, the Hegarty Phonics activities. That's this group. We stapled it so that you knew that it went together. The first thing that you need to do is a minute timing. We do this every day in class. Um, have your student point to the first, whoo, the first letter and time them and they should go through and say the names of each letters as quickly as they can for a minute. If they get done by a minute, you can encourage them to go back up to the top and keep going until a minute is up. Or you can say, holy cow, you did it, good job. Um, and then write down here at the bottom and keep track of how many words they get each time just to keep that motivation going. We have competitions with my morning and afternoon class and with each other. So sometimes that competitive spirit works. After they do each letter name, then you're going to go through and do each letter sound. So you'll point here and they'll you'll start your timer and go j, s, k, i, t, a, k, k, d, f, and continue through. We're focusing on, we teach long and short letter sounds, short vowel sounds. So if you want to do both, you can have them do both. So that would be like j, s, k, i, t, a, o, k. You can choose to do that with your child. They are not used to doing that. So you can choose just to do the short sounds or you can switch on them and do the long sounds. Now just a reminder, the short sound, um, short sound for A is A. Ah. We focus on how our mouth feels. A says A. Ah. O says A. Ah. Our mouth is a circle A. Ah. E says E. Eh. Our cheeks kind of go up. We feel it in our face. I says eh, we feel it in our gut, our shoulders kind of go down, it's like oh, we're ill, eh, eh, ill, and you says uh, like we're going up, so we always point up. So just a frame of mind for you guys to know. So they'll go through and say their letter names, and then the letter sounds for a minute, and we take a break in between, we do this, okay, get your wiggles out, and we wiggle, 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 and then we go back to work. After that, on the back page, on the back side is the nonsense words. These are not real words, that's why they're called nonsense words. The whole purpose of this is to help with blending, segmenting, and reading in words. So there's two ways you can do this. If your child has not made the transition to reading, as I talked to many of you at conferences, which I'm so grateful we had you guys before this, but if I mention that your child hasn't made the transition to reading, then you need to do it this first way. What you'll do is they say each letter sound and then the word. So it'll go k, ek. Keck, f, iv, fiv, os, os, okay? Now, if your student is going k, ek, and not saying it correctly, then they're not hearing the word. So what we do and what I would do, what I do with your student is I tell them to say it faster once they've got it. K, ek, k, ek, k, ek, k, keck, because they're just not used to hearing it create a word. So saying it faster, they just kind of blends itself together and that helps create that blending skill. Um, for those of you whose students are on level, so if they had a three or a four on their report card, what I'd like you to be doing with them is the second step is where they should just be saying the word, not sounding each sound out. So they should be able to go, they should be able to go keck, fiv, os, zool, how, remember those short sounds. Um, and be able to do that and time them and see how many they can get in a minute. In kindergarten, at the end of kindergarten, they need to be able to get 25 or more nonsense words. So be working on that. If your student is already getting 25, and I know there are a few who do, then make it higher for them. Give them, let's see if we can get 30, let's see if we can get 50, let's see if we can get this whole page. Um, but you need to listen carefully because if they're getting the vowel sound wrong, again, it needs to be short, then they will not 
it won't be complete. Oh no, my, my thing stopped. That's not annoying. Anyways, so be working on that. I'll make sure I touch my laptop. Then the last one is working on beginning, middle, and end sounds. So um, what you'll do is you'll pick five random words from this page. Make sure they're not in the same column because they all end in the same the same pattern. So pick one. So if I pick the word cab, then I would ask my I'd ask the student, what's the first sound in cab? And they can go. K we do lots of karate chopping in class and hand movements, so we chop for the first word. Then I'd say, okay, what's the middle sound of cab? And we do roller coaster, so they go k ab, middle sound, ah, ah, ah. And then I'll say, what's the end sound of cab? And they will can do two ways. They can do roller coaster, k ab, what's the last sound, b, b, b. Or we can punch it out and we go cab, b, b, b. But, so those are the two ways you can do that one. And you're going to repeat that five times with five random words. When you do a word, have them cross it out or you cross it out so that you don't do the word again. But that is the Hungry Phonics activities. The next one is the journal writing. You have five pages front and back for the journal writing and you have prompts that you or your child can choose from in the blue packet. Now, with our journal writing, we are working on two sentences. I know some kids are not there yet, but everybody can write a sentence prompt now at this point. As they're doing, sorry, I had to get my train of thought. As they're doing this, um, encourage them to be using their sight words correctly and spelling them correctly. I, like, we, um, she, he, all those sight words that are in the back of their homework folder the color pages that you guys have been working on since the beginning of the year, those are sight words. We do not expect at this point for them to be able to spell every sight word correctly, but we do expect them to start making an effort to spell those correctly. Like the word I should be able to spell correctly. Like, to, me, she. These are words we use so much that they should be able to spell correctly. So as you're doing your sentences and they're writing a prompt like, which holiday is your favorite and why? Um, have them first tell you the sentence. I like St. Patrick's Day because I like green. Okay, then we count out the words. I like St. Patrick's. They're going to want to make it Patrick's. Patrick's Day because I like green. Okay, that's nine words. So in my sentence, I should have nine words before I put my period. Make sure they're counting it out and writing it. The first thing that a lot of kids still struggle with are spaces. So in class, you can use a finger. Some kids can't do that because they want to use the finger they write with, and then they get all kinds of confused. So find something in the house that they can use as a finger space. We have a space man, and it's just a clothespin. So you can use another pencil, an eraser, um, a toothpick. Well, a toothpick's too skinny, but find something that has a good width to it and have them put it in between the words as they write it. The main things we're focusing on is a capital letter. Ooh, this side. A capital letter at the beginning of the sentence, and I. That's all we've talked about in kindergarten. I haven't gotten into proper nouns. I haven't gotten into names, and only their name. Um, so yes, feel free to start doing that, but it's not an expectation that we have for them right now. And make sure that they have a period. I've talked about exclamation and question marks, but I haven't um, emphasized them in their writing. So feel free to do that too. But they do need to be able to walk out of kindergarten putting periods at the end of their sentences. So please encourage that. Then the last thing they need to do is have a picture that matches their sentence. We have been working so hard on our pictures. Drawing and coloring is not everyone's favorite thing. And I've noticed over the years, coloring and drawing pictures is not fun for a lot of kids. But we're still encouraging them to do it and to do a good job. I'm not expecting artists. I'm not expecting masterpieces. But I am expecting effort. And I'm expecting the page to be filled. So if I wrote my sentence about liking St. Patrick's Day because thing, because it's green, then I would draw all the green things that I see in St. Patrick's Day. I try to fill the page. Um, lots of times I ask the kids, oh, I can't tell if you're inside or if you're outside. Or, oh, that's an apple. Why don't you draw an apple tree? Or, you know, just have them add more details and make it fun. And I know for a lot of kids it's not fun. So do your best and encourage them to give me good quality pictures. Now, there are a few students, and I would have talked to you about this at conferences, who are still using a highlighter. I am not 
writing the sentences out, the full sentence for any kid in my class. So please don't do that. If your student struggles, then give them the sentence starter on a piece of paper I like. They can copy that and then um, St. Patrick's Day. Have them try and sound it out. Encourage them. Help them pull that word out. Chop it up. Ain't. You know, write those sounds out. They can do that. They're used to me doing it, so please do that too. And then the next word you can have written down for them to copy. Or um, you have them write, I like. And you write in highlighter what they like so that they can write on top of it. Break it up, but please do not do the whole sentence for them. There is not a single kid in my class who cannot write parts of a sentence. So please, please continue to do that for me. Journal writing prompts are in the blue paper. The next one is Journey's worksheets. These are worksheets that they have been seeing, that they have seen and done all year long. So it's not anything new. The only thing new is the letter that we're working on. Now in class, we trace, then we write. Hat starts with H, so we put a capital H. House starts with H, so we write a lowercase h. King and kite, capital K, lowercase k. Woo, I'm getting crazy with that. Please work on their form. This is the time where I'm able to focus on each letter and how you should be writing it. All of these, ugh, all of these letters touch the top and the bottom line. So many kids, their H's look like lowercase n's. Please help emphasize that. I am a stickler. Kindergarten is a stickler about handwriting, so first grade doesn't have to be. So please help keep that going. Then for the rest of it, they're writing the beginning sounds of each picture. So in class, we go through and I tell them what the picture is. Helicopter, kitten, keys, oh, oh, hand. And then they go back to their seats and they do this on their own and then they come check it with me. This is something they need to do on their own and then check it with you. I check everything in class every stinking day. Please do the same thing. If you are not correcting them, um, within, I think s s research has said within like the first seven minutes of after doing it, it doesn't matter to them anymore. anymore. They've moved on. So in class, they do a page, they come check it with me. Then they do the next page, they come check it with me. That way I can see, oh, you're having a hard time with writing the letter K or you're having a hard time with hearing the sound in house those types of things, and that's when I do the one-on-one -on -one instruction. So this is an opportunity for you to say, go and do, then come check it with me. And you'll notice that a lot of these pages look similar. It's just helping them get that down. With this one, use the roller coaster to find the missing sound. Same with this one. And then we get some new sounds of reviews. Make sure that they know what the picture is. And know that if you're not sure, you can ask me. But also, it's going to start with one of the letters that are at the top of that page. So these are a great opportunity for independent go and do while you either help another child or take a deep breath. <laughs> the next one is our sight word pages. Um, sight words are super important when they've made that transition to reading sight words are that transition they go from being able to read simple words to now simple words and sight words. So we have three different sight word pages that we do regularly. Um, I'll show you right here. Oh man, you guys, um, they need to color it. Now the reason why we color it is a fine motor scale. Staying within the lines is fine motor. Some kids want to scribble and I will admit I have gotten lazy with emphasizing this. So I'm putting that out there. And if you want to be a stickler, please be a stickler. But it's a fine motor skill of being able to color within the lines. So they color it, then they write it and trace it. Then they find it, they can circle it. And then right here, they use it. So they use the word in a sentence, three. Keep it super simple. Talk about it together. She is three. I have three dogs. So they're putting it in a sentence form, finger spaces, capital letters where they're supposed to be, periods at the end, and then they cut it out and glue it spelled correctly. Now, if you don't have scissors and glue, you can just have them write the word again, okay? Then the other type of sight word page that we have is this, very similar things. They trace it, they color it in, again, fine motor skills. They whoop, write it three times, one on each line, and then they cut it out 
and glue it in the correct order of how you spell that word. Again, they can just write it if you don't have scissors and glue. We do that sometimes. And then the other one, the other type of sight word looks like this. Again, trace it, write it three times, color, fine motor, find it, so they'll color in the boxes that have the word that they're working on. And then this is the difference. You have pictures instead of letters, and you'll match the beginning sound. So this is a slide. The first sound in slide is s. So I'd put it over and glue it by the s. So the same with those ones, okay? Those are our sight word pages. Again, that's something that they can go do and then come back to you and you can check it. Then the next thing on the list is the center activities. This is where we reiterate things and we just kind of practice. So all of these are... Never mind, not all of these. A few of these things they can do by themselves. So it's just fun activities. We had, obviously, St. Patrick's Day yesterday. So we have some fun St. Patrick's activities, just different ones. Talk to them about it. Then you can have them go do it or be near while they do it. Stuff like that, okay? Once a week, so one time this week and one time next week, you'll have a Scholastic Magazine to choose from. These are really great conversations. I can't tell you how many great conversations we've had in class because we were talking about frogs, which is this one, but um, we talked about St. Patrick's last week and just all those fun things. So um, choose one, read it together in class. We read it as a whole class together. Their fingers following along. They're saying the words with me. We do the activity on the back and then the activity pages that go with it that help with comprehension or just kind of have fun with it. So choose one of those. The next thing that is on your blue paper, if I can find it, is either Lexia 20 Minutes each day or reading out loud 20 minutes each day. It's your choice. You want to do both? Do both. If I at conferences said that reading is a place where your child struggles, I would encourage you to do both. Um, Lexia is one of the ways that I'm going to be able to stay in really close contact and knowing where your child's progress is going, if they're improving or not. Um, so please do it regularly. Lexia has a goal for each kid of how many minutes they need to get each week in order to finish kindergarten's um, levels on Lexia. So if you would like to know your child's personal minutes, please write me on Dojo and I can tell you it ranges from 20 minutes a week to 60 minutes a week. And the more minutes your child needs to do, that means they're not on track to finish in time by the end of the year. Um, so let me know if you need that. The other thing with Lexia is as they're working, I get notified of areas that they're struggling with and lessons. So as I get those lessons, I will be emailing them. I can't do it through Dojo. I haven't been able to figure out how to do that yet, but I'm gonna try. I'll be emailing you the lesson of where they're struggling at in Lexia. And this lesson comes with things you can cut out and pictures and step-by-step -step of what you, the parent, can say. Super easy, but if it's something that is really hard for you to grasp or how to teach or, you know, it's just hard, again, I'm here. Give me, give me a message, give me a call, whatever you need. So one thing I wanted to say on Lexia is when they first log in and they're in the world part, there are two circles at the top. The first circle tells you how many minutes they've done, and the second circle tells you how many units they've done. These, the units is is vital in understanding whether your child is accomplishing a lot or not. The more minutes, minutes, the more units they do, that means they're moving at a really good pace. A unit should take a student between two to seven minutes long. So if your child is getting five or more units done in their sitting, perfect. But if they're getting one or two in 20 minutes, they are struggling. So look at that each time they log off and go, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna go sit with them and watch them and then I can know, okay, they're struggling with this, so let's go take a minute and talk about it. Lexia is not for you to do it for them. You can sit there and listen and help them stay focused, but you're not there to give them the answers. Um, this is for them to grow and build. If you are giving them the answers, then they're gonna have major holes and we do not want holes when they go to first grade. So they have the reading and then we have physical activity um, standards that kindergartners are supposed to be able to do before they go to first grade. And then we have mystery science videos. These videos are awesome. They're so 
fun. The kids love them. We've done a lot in class. We do them a lot on Fridays. Um, but look at the list that's on there and have them choose one. We have done a few of these. So if your student says, I've already done that, then just pick a different one and just write the title down if it's not already on the list. And enjoy it. These activities can be, or these videos are, some of them are super interactive and some of them aren't. But they're just so interesting. Like, why do we get hiccups? Like, it's so interesting. So have them pick one and watch one each day just to help their mind going. The last thing I want to mention is the reading website that I gave each of you to log into. Please do that sometime this week. Have your child get familiar with it. This is how I'm going to be assigning books for them in their level to read. I know that not everybody has books lying around their house to read and the libraries are closed like we're stuck. Epic has loads and loads of books where they can read, it can be read to them, you can read it to them, so many options and it has the levels for you. Um, if you want to know your child's level, write me on Dojo, I will tell you what level they are at currently and you can go in the tab that's labeled F and P and pick that and pick the level B or level C books and then in there they can just go to town and if it's a little hard for them then do it with them or do the read to me books and have them read it with them um, moving their fingers touching the screen I, or I know you guys might have wills about touching the screen but have them be interactive with it just so that progress moves along that's the biggest area that I'm worried is going to decrease because kindergarten it's such momentum with reading with reading and I just don't want to see anybody hit a wall or not progress when by the time we get back to school. Um, I hope that all made sense. Oh, I forgot the math pages. Oh my goodness. This is a long video. The math pages. What I did was I went through everyone's math book and I pulled out pages that maybe they didn't get done or that they were absent for and the, then the rest of the pages we would need to do for this unit. So you're going to open that up and go, holy cow, Mrs. Morrow, who do you think I am? <laughs> it feels like a lot, but some of those pages are already done. Some of them, it's just one side you need to do, but you only need to do one math page a day. Just one, okay? And we have been focusing a lot on addition and subtraction and partners. And partners is a fancy word of saying the two numbers that put together equal another number. So like two and three are partners of five because when you put them together, they make five. Um, four and one are partners of five because when you put them together, they make five. So it's just another word for add-ins, basically. Um, so be working on those and using the other resources on there for math. The websites that we put in the blue packet if they get done with those quickly because I know so many excuse me of us of these kids get math so fast and I know that that might be a great place in the middle of the day for them to do you guys are awesome this is crazy and it's just crazy but I'm so grateful that I know that I have so many parents who are wanting to support their children's education and that you'll do it please use me I am still teaching. I may be in my pajamas and I might be at home, but I am still their teacher. I still work every day from 8.30 to 3. I'm just at home. So write me on Dojo. I will write you as promptly as I can and answer your questions. We can figure out how to video chat. We can figure out, we can talk on the phone. If your child needs to see me and have me talking to them, I know that I'm not mom, so that might help sometimes. But please, please reach out and um, good luck. It's going to be really great. I think it's going to be awesome. So thanks for all that you're doing at home, and we can do this.